Hey everyone, today we're tearing down the MSI 5700XC Evoke OC. This card, is, it's already been reviewed by us. It's okay on thermals, it has a bit more aggressive GPU thermal target than Sapphire, but it runs louder to achieve that target. And the memory and the VRM cooling left a bit to be desired, a lot to be desired on, on the memory cooling specifically. So we're gonna take it apart, see if we can figure out why that is, and look at the overall build quality of the card from the cooler standpoint. Before that, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible has a massive audiobook library, including content that talks computers and games. Audible has an entire series from the official Computer History Museum, which we've actually toured in the past and can support as a leader in computer education. Audible also hosts the Ultimate History of Video Games, something I read back when researching GN content and can highly recommend for gaming and hardware enthusiasts. Audible's 30-day free trial can be unlocked at audible.com slash gamersnexus, or you can text gamersnexus, one word, to 500-500, where you'll get a free audiobook and two Audible originals, or click the link in the description below. So here's the Evoke. We already did the review on these cards. This is the shroud for the Sapphire card, and then this is the cooler for the Sapphire card, but the Sapphire cooling solution was interesting because they split out this plate. There's just a recap of our other teardown. If you missed it, you should go watch it, but split out this plate for the uh, memory and VRM cooling separately, and then enough airflow gets through this larger heat sink that it can still cool the components pretty directly without bridging the VRM and VRAM solution with the GPU solution, so they're isolated in a way that it benefits everything. You're, you're not sharing a single heat sink between all the devices, and enough airflow is getting down there that it still keeps components that can run acceptably hot at good temperatures, so like the MOSFETs can run acceptably uh, at a higher temperature than the GPU could, or the memory could as an example. So that's the Sapphire one. The MSI one, dual fan also. Let's get a measurement on the fan. It's probably 100 millimeters. So it's gonna be 90, not 100, but it's a 90 millimeter fan, two of them. And different from the old Gaming X design that actually worked pretty well. They've gone the champagne look. We don't really need to talk about that too much. So for the toolkit, we are going to use our GN Teardown Toolkit, which you can get on store.gamersnexus.net. Comes with 10 tools, all for specifically picked for GPU, video card disassembly, and uh, customized, like we ground down the heads here so that they can clear capacitors when you're working on NVIDIA cards, for example. And we also used a, a CRV for the metal for the other tools, the other eight tools. And it comes in a sick bag with a GPU diagram on it. All right, so first thing, four screws for the GPU heatsink, and there is a warranty void if removed sticker on it, which is illegal in the US to have that sticker. So that's bad, and MSI should get rid of it, and also they should feel bad. We don't like these warranty void if removed stickers. It's uh, infringing on right to repair and also not enforceable, and also illegal in the U.S. Anyway, we'll take the screws out. Actually, I think MSI may have been on a list with ASUS for people getting in trouble for those. ASUS was definitely on the list. That'll free the heat sink, but we need to get it out from under the shroud, which is probably gonna require taking out a few more screws. So you can see that this screw in the uh, back plate is going through the PCB into the base plate, and that's true in a few places. So let's pull those out. I think these are probably the same size. Yep, so we're just using a PH1 screwdriver from our toolkit, again, on the store. There's only two screws back here. You can see screws coming in through the base plate on the other side into these locations, those four locations. We might need to take some more out. Okay, there we go. That's free. I don't think the plate, the IO plate had to come off, but it made it a bit easier. We have to pull the cables. So there's a fan cable down here. Right there. Might be one more cable somewhere. Remember not to pull by the actual wires. It is very likely that you rip the fan header off the PCB if you do that. Only pull by the header itself. Sometimes you can use a flat head to make that easier. All right, so that's freed, but we're actually still stuck up here. Whoop-bye. 
What's holding us? Glue? Oh, it's tape. Wow, okay. That's interesting. Interesting choice. Tape. Double-sided tape. Not really... Doesn't really seem necessary, but whatever. There's a lot of screws in there already. So that, it probably holds it a bit tighter to keep these flush. So if you never open it, it's fine. Uh, this is not gonna really stay sticky anymore now that it's been opened. So if you open it, you'll have to replace that or just peel it off and ignore it was ever there. Probably won't be quite as flush. There's the card. This is a pretty liquidy thermal paste actually, more than we normally see. Some of the Shinetsu stuff doesn't really a lot of the common pastes are not that liquidy once you pull the shroud off or the heat sink off. And we now <laughs> we now see the biggest problem. Man, this is this is so bad. So if you remember, our biggest complaint with this card was the memory thermals. It was like it was the difference between saying, you know what, it really doesn't matter if you buy sapphire or MSI, and saying buy sapphire, which is what we said. Look at that. That's not because half of it came off on the heatsink when I pulled it off. That's how they made it. That's not even 50% of the memory. They didn't even get the, the hottest spot of this memory module. It's not the left side. It's dead center. So if anything, if you're going to only cover part of it, at least cover like the center 60 or 70%. That's terrible. That's a... Bad design. So I'm thinking MSI was trying to avoid retooling. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure the details, but maybe they had this plate tooled from a different card previously, maybe Polaris, maybe something else, and didn't want to retool it. And if that's the case, it would be a cost-saving measure, and then you just go with good enough, which is what they did here. You can see that only part of the memory module is contacting the heatsink, which is dumb. That is a very bad design. Uh, it saves cost, but it's going to cost them in sales because the card has comparatively bad memory thermals to their competition. So bad, bad MSI. Don't do that. You guys know better than this at this point. MSI has made really good coolers. The Gaming X uh, dual fan design for those NVIDIA cards, like the 1080 Ti's, was one of the best that we tested for noise normalized thermals. So it's really disappointing to see this regression in design approach. But let's look at why they did it or what they've got here. I would like to separate the rest of the shroud, I think, from the heat sink if it's easily done, just so that we can look at it more easily. And it looks like that is secured maybe by the fans. There are some other screws in here holding in this plate, stuff like that, which is just plastic. PH1 size screw, but the fan blades are too tight, so we're going to use a, a, a PH00. So the way Sapphire did this was with one screw, was it one or two? One screw in there, one up there, and then it sockets in a, a pins to pin out, I guess, instead of having a cable. We'll see what MSI does once we get this third screw out. No, it's a cable. That's kind of annoying. I think I got it. There's some small screws up here. Yep, okay. That was it. So there's some smaller screws up here that go into the plastic that house the fans and mount them to the heat sink. Pull those out. There's going to be two probably on the other side. Okay, fan cable goes through this heat pipe. So the shroud's loose, and we've got the fan assembly. That's what you would do if you wanted to replace the fan. You take all this off, and then you would get down to the fan, remove that. There's a cable here. They bridge to each other, and then plug into the PCB. And if you care about it, the fan is a PowerLogic fan. We actually have a video 
at Paralogic's booth at uh, Computex or CES, Computex, I think, one year. They make a lot of the fans for most of these companies. EVGA, I think, is included in that list. So it is a model PLD09210S12HH if you want to replace it. And it is listed as 12 volts, 0.4 amps. So that would be what you do to replace it. Get rid of that. Okay, so now our heatsink is loose. We can do a comparison here Sapphire to MSI. So, first of all, MSI has gone with a nickel plated. Uh, copper cold plate right there in the center, so that is, that's what that is. And then uh, on the outer edge, they're sharing a cooling solution with the GPU, and that appears to be aluminum. Yes, that is not steel. And that's connected via solder to the fin stack. And so what's happening here is the memory is syncing at the same solution as GPU, so they will jointly, uh, the, the heat sink is responsible jointly for cooling more, dissipating more heat in watts than something like this would be, which there's not necessarily a better or worse design universally. It just, it depends design to design, card to card. Sapphires happens to work better in this instance, but what they're doing is isolating the two, so this stuff isn't really sinking into here too much. It is a bit... You get some contact with the heat pipes, but uh, mostly it's a standalone solution that gets cooled by the air through the top. In terms of heat pipes, they're not too different, but they are different. So Sapphire's got one, two, three, four, five heat pipes going through the cold plate. Sapphire's, or sorry, MSI is running one, two, three, four through the cold plate. But what really matters is the uh, contact area to the actual GPU more so than how many heat pipes doesn't really win anything. It's, it's how well are they used. So in terms of size, these are six mil, and these are also six mil heat pipes. But ultimately, we've already tested the two, and we know objectively that MSI is doing worse for memory and VRM thermals, and we can see why. Memory is very obvious. This is, avoided using the word earlier, but this is just stupid, the way this is cooled with half of a thermal pad on half the memory module uh, so that they didn't have to make it any taller on this plate and bring it up to here. Not sure what the reasoning was for that, but it's what they decided to do. And the VRM ran acceptably in terms of temperature. It was a bit warmer on average than Sapphire's. Okay, so they're similar PCBs, but they're not identical. It seems like ultimately the real problem with this is just not enough contact area with the memory. That's, that's the big issue I have with the design. It's, um, it probably saved some money. There's probably some manufacturing and cost saving reason to do it this way. It's not the right way to do it. It's uh, for the performance that is. And we now understand very clearly why this is objectively worse in some cooling departments than the competing model. Plus the back plate isn't even leveraged. Got a metal back plate that's coated to protect it against shorts, obviously, but no, no uh, thermal pad connection, so you're not leveraging the potential cooling advantage, which is minor but present. It's an IR35217 controller on the back, which is the exact same as what Sapphire is using on the back of theirs. And then the front side is using NCP on, or uh, it's using on semi. MOSFETs that if Bill Dewood does a thing for us on this, we'll talk about separately. But all we really care about is the, what's this? Weird. Uh, all we really care about is the cooling solution. And some reason there's like, maybe it's just thermal pad grease. That's pretty greasy, very greasy. Some up here too, actually. That's glue. Oh, that's probably from this thing. It's probably from the shroud being double-sided taped on there. Would this fit? That would be interesting. Ha, huh, okay. The PCB is, the layout's basically identical. So I think we're working with a, some form of reference design probably. 
uh, not the original original reference, which looks like this, much different. But anyway, this would actually fit. Ex would the screw holes line up? Oh, they would. <laughs> I have, I don't know, I have an idea for this. If everything fits, we could do a transplant. Although there's not much point to it because we've already done this test, which is with two different PCBs, but it would give us a proper AB comparison, I guess, if we wanted to do it. But anyway, if it fits, I might consider that. So that's the MSI Evoco C. As we said in the review, it's not the worst card. It overall does okay. It's better than reference, but it's worse than the pulse. And acoustics and thermals, uh, evidently, and cooler design, which should have been obvious by losing in acoustics and thermals. It's got a higher stock frequency. It runs 1.4 to 2% faster in frame rate. That's not because uh, the, it's not running hotter because it's running 2% faster. That doesn't really make any sense. It's running hotter because the design's bad. So this cooler could be much better without that much more effort. Bigger thermal pads covering the whole. I mean, this area, there's no excuse. You can cover the whole service area of the memory module, and it would fit on that part of the plate. This top area, maybe there's some tooling excuse I don't know about. It's always going to come down to cost, but there might be an excuse here where they didn't extend this because it would have cost more money. Stupid reason, but it'd be a lot more money than a bigger thermal pad, which is negligible. Uh, so yeah, we'd like to see this plate bigger. We'd like to see thermal pads cover the whole service area of the memory modules and maybe some other changes, but those are the big ones. Just kind of not great design in general. Uh, also, there's kind of limited contact area now that I'm looking at it to the fins. But anyway, that's the MSI Evoco C. You can watch the review if you want to see our other conclusions on it, but now you'll have more information as to why the thermals were what they were. Thank you for watching. If you want to support us directly for this type of video, we would encourage you to go to store.cameraxis.net to pick up one of our toolkits. Comes in a sweet bag like this. It's got 10 tools that we made custom for video card disassembly. Some of them are not in here because we were just using them, but you can get more information on the store about the rest of the kit. And it also has some uh, instruction cards included in the zipper pouch for how to take apart the average video card, a couple of them. So uh, thanks for watching, subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.